walked in the den with me about a pastor Jenkins, he told me. He said he is an innovationalist. One that believes in change. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes. One that believes in change. Mm -hmm. If your leader believes in change, meaning once I hear from God and he tells me to change, I got to change. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got to flow with that too. Right. To on. become an agent of change. You got to have innovation. That's right. That's right. You got to know that something new is taking place. And something new has already taken place. Amen. You see, people of God come in in church, you know, uh, uh, and we're going to get there. All of us going to get there because I had to get there. Mm -hmm. We come in, we have a long day. We don't gave the world all our strength, all our energy, all our time. And then we have services and we're so uh, just exhausted. Yeah. Just exhausted. And that's when you have to minister to yourself and tell yourself, you're going to wake up, you're going to sit up, you're going to get up, and you're going to listen. Because this is a life-changing word. Anytime you step in the doors, it should be a life-changing word. You should not go out the same, ever. Ever. Don't even expect to go out the same. Change. Yes, Jesus. Innovation. To renew. Affecting a change, the established order, is introducing something new. Yes. So when you start flowing in the apostolic, really flowing in the heaven, it's always going to be something new introduced to you. Always something new. Always something new. Your flesh is going to want to rebel. Your mind going to tell you, don't take that. You don't need that. Why we got to do this that way? Why we got to do it the new way? Why, 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 why? Come on. Why? Because God said it. <coughs> same God. Same God. Forever changing things. Mm -hmm. Changing and changing. If you want to be apostolic, the murmuring got to be uprooted. Come on. The complaining got to go. Come on. The self got to go. And flesh, you got to definitely say bye bye to flesh. Amen. Amen. Because you cannot walk as a sergeant, as a lieutenant, and show them can't walk as a general in this army. Come on. With any of that. Come on. You got to be willing to get up. I don't care if it's five o'clock in the morning. I don't care if it's three o'clock in the morning. And the pastor say, we got to go. We got to go to Alabama. We got to go to Georgia. We got to go. You got all you do. Pack your bag and get ready to go. You should have a bag already packed. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on. I don't think the people of God really understand when God hears the cry of his people. Amen. Come on. Amen. He sends down orders to the general. And he said, do this, do this, do this. Amen. He don't look for no excuses from us. Amen. Come on. As generals in this army, there is no excuse. There's no excuse. I don't care what you pull out the hat, there's no excuse. That's right. Come on. That's right. That's right. He said that the dead bury the dead. And I think that's the most serious thing that you can even happen in a person's life. Mm -hmm. Amen. I've been tested and tested and tested on that scripture time and time again. Yes. My uncle passed. God said, let the dead bury the dead. I meet you in Georgia. You asked me to save him. He lived like hell all his life. My God. Two days before he died, he got saved. That God, God didn't even allow me to go to the hospital. He said, my husband, he said, and you prepare yourself to go to Georgia. Amen. I was so hurt. I was tore up from the floor. But see, I can't be moved by my emotions like that. Amen. Come on, that's right. The Lord said, you cry all the way there, but you go. That's right. Come on. And then I get repercussion. Oh, yeah. That's my mama only brother. She didn't talk to me for a minute. My aunties didn't talk to me for a minute. They talked about me. Mm. Called me all sorts of things. You know, they think you're in a cult and you're crazy. Mm. But I heard the voice of God. Yes, amen. I cannot disobey God. Amen. My husband, daddy died. I overseer told us, uh uh, he said, you need to be in Atlanta. I got a word from God. Then you can go to the funeral. Amen. Come on. Come on. We didn't even have enough money to travel to the funeral. He said, just get some gas and 
your car and get to Atlanta. We got gas and got in our car and that was all we had. And we got to Atlanta and we had to be awoke and attentive, had to put all that stuff behind us and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us. The Spirit, He said, you, you, you got a church, you got sheep that need to be fed, and you need to be fed. Get here. Amen. Those were the instructions that God gave Amen. him as being a general in the army. Amen. We obey. And before we left, he said, now, this man and woman of God have a situation. They need finances. He didn't beg, he didn't plead, and he didn't tell the people how much to give. He said, now give. And they gave abundantly above what we can think of as. Then when we got there, of course his sisters were mad. Everybody was mad, but that's okay. God was pleased. Yes, the man. Then when we got there, his sister said, when are you all leaving? We had to leave Sunday because we had other things to do. Concerning ministry, we had to get back on the road. She said, come by the house before you leave. We did. Amen. This is what I hear tell you. She's so stingy to money crying when she's holding it. <laughs> <laughs> she gave us the envelope and she said, here, take this. Amen. We didn't know what was in it. We got on the road and I said, yes, it was in this envelope. Amen. Open the envelope. And when I tell you thousands of dollars, my God, in the envelope. Y'all oh, think you got a hand clap for that? Yes, okay. amen. Trust me, we as leaders don't like sharing our business. Because sometimes people take it the wrong way. Mm. But I shared it with you all to say you got to be obedient to God. Regardless of what situation is going on. That's right. We feel like our business ain't nobody's business, but God said, your business, you ain't got no business. Mm -hmm. Come on. You tell what I tell you to tell, and then go again. You want to try to hold on to okay. something, God said, you tell it. Because it'll be somebody. Yeah. You got to understand, when you're walking in this army, your business is God's business. He'll tell you to tell you. You better tell it. Amen. Because mm. I sure enough, man, God didn't like telling nobody my business. And I tell it all. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> all right. I tell on me. Y'all right. don't have to worry about nobody talking about a positive fuck, I'm going to tell it myself. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. When you have something that is new, it's fresh, it's unusual, new stuff, new stuff. I want to show you all something. Now, when you think of, just think of the word new. When you think of, you get a new dress, new pair of shoes, new car, new house. Just think about the word new. What goes through you when you get something new? You get excited. Come on. Excited. Excited. You get happy. You get joy. Because it's new. Mm. It's something you never had before, right? Mm. Okay. Bring it. Bring that bag now. I want to show you all something. This is a bless y'all. Here comes the revelation. This right here is my dog. This is smart. Turn smarty around, let him see. It's my dog. I had a, my daughter had a real dog, but the dog died and got that. That was my grandbaby, that was my heart. And when the dog got hit by the car, I said, no more grandchildren. No more granddaughters. I, I can't take it. I can't take that. So this is my dog, smart. Y'all never seen Smarty before, have you? Mm -mm. I mean, no, if I give y'all Smarty, y'all just play with him and rub on him and just love on him because he knew. He knew. You ain't never seen Smarty before. Okay, this is Smarty. Now, when you look at Smarty, he looks like a little stuffed dog. Mm -hmm. When you think of something new, it's never existed before. It's something that somebody thought of, somebody developed, and somebody made. And they produced it. This is Smarty. Somebody thought, let me make a dog that looks real. Mm -hmm. Somebody thought of this. This is something new that you've never seen before. But you haven't seen all. Oh, come it's Smarty. This Smarty right here, I got it. I got it. She too slow, huh, Smarty? She's too slow. Oh, here's Smarty.
<laughs> Marty pay too much. This is funny. Oh, you've never seen that before. And a stop doll. See, that's right, Smarty. <laughs> my baby want that dog. Look, my baby want that dog. Yes,
but known or discovered for the first time. Let me show you something. When you talk about new, Smiley already existed. Mm -hmm. He already exists. So, is he really new? Is he really new? No. Because no. no, he already exists. They say they have found another planet out there. A new planet. But is it really new? No. It's not new. It's, it's already out there. Out there. Yeah. They just discovered it That's and right. saw it for the first time. That's right. So the Lord began to deal with me. He said, tell my people, it's gifts in them. They're not new. They just in them. They just but they haven't it yet. Yeah. yeah. Yes, amen. So as being an innovator, you have some gifts in you that haven't manifested yet that God is getting ready to manifest. Thank and you. then they say, oh, that's a new thing I'm doing. Is it really new? Hmm. It's not really new. It was in you all the time. But it's new to you because you just not discovered it. I found out about it. Amen. So you see, this ministry is not really new. And the things you're doing are not really new. It's been in existence all the time. That's right. But you all are coming into it and just now finding out about it. Finding out the vision, the destiny, and the purpose of the ministry. So is it really new? No. It's been here all the time. So God began to, to, to talk to the man of God. See, it's been in the mind of God for eons. Mm -hmm. You all were in the, man, the mind of God for eons. Yes. Those that are really purposed to be here and supposed